Mr. Chairman, MSC remains committed in ensuring our water sustainability and supply of safe food for future generations. Let me explain how we intend to do so, partnering businesses and Singaporeans. Even as we commission new desalination and new water plants, this infrastructure cannot keep pace with demand as our economy and our population grow. We must, let, we must not let up on our efforts to conserve water. Household water consumption decreased from 148 to 141 litres per person per day, or LPCD, between 2016 and 2019. This increased to 154 LPCD last year, with more staying home during the pandemic. We must continue to drive water conservation efforts to achieve our goal of 130 LPCD by 2030. Mr. Yip Hon Wing suggested tapping on technology to enhance water use efficiency. This is what we are trying to do. PUB will commence the first phase of Smart Water Meter program later this year to install 300,000 smart water meters in new and existing residential, commercial, and industrial premises in seven districts across the island by 2023. Consumers can monitor their daily water use and receive notification and tips through the accompanying web portals. Alerts will be sent when abnormal water use patterns are detected, signifying potential leaks that need to be fixed. PUB will partner the non-domestic sector to increase its water efficiency, as the sector is projected to account for the major part of the total water demand by 2060, as noted by Ms. Polisan and Mr. Yip Hon Wing. With your permission, Mr. Chairman, may I display some slides on the LCD screen? Yes, please. Thank you. From January 2022, the Mandatory Water Efficiency Labelling Scheme, or MWLES, will be extended to water closets flush valves that are used in toilets and premises like shopping malls and offices. As a start, only those with a minimum two-tick efficiency rating can be sold. PUB will also introduce the mandatory minimum water efficiency requirements for three types of commercial equipment, nam namely washer extractors, dishwashers, and high-pressure washers. Both schemes are expected to save about 0.72 million gallons of water per day, equivalent to 480 Olympic-sized swimming pools worth of water annually. Starbucks managed to reduce its annual water consumption, as an example, by 2% for its outlets that have switched to water-efficient dishwashers. 645 cubic meters of water was saved in a year, equivalent to about a quarter of an Olympic-sized swimming pool, and they also save $1,800 from their annual bills. I would like to assure Ms. Cheng Li Hui that PUB will continue to minimize water losses through smart and cost-effective measures, even though Singapore already has one of the lowest water leakages in the world, with five leaks for every 100 kilometers of pipes yearly. PUB will install 1,200 permanent leak detection sensors by 2021 to remotely monitor approximately 500 kilometers of large water pipelines. Advanced leak detection tools such as the smart ball will be propelled by the water flow within the pipeline to survey long stretches for leaks. Mr. Yip Hong Wing stressed the importance of safeguarding our used water resources. Indeed, Singapore is one of the few countries to close the water loop, returning used water to the system in the form of new water as well as industrial water. PUB takes a zero-tolerance approach towards improper used water discharges and will not hesitate to prosecute errant companies because improper discharges pose health hazards to sewerage workers and cause disruptions to our water reclamation process. PUB's enforcement efforts are complemented by advanced sensing technologies to monitor these illegal discharges. The network of online volatile organic compounds monitoring units will be expanded from the current 40 units to 100 units by end 2021. 175 trade premises will have microbial electrochemical sensors installed in their last inspection chambers from 100 today. 
to alert PUB when excessive heavy metals are detected. These data help PUB more accurately identify high-risk trade premises and address emerging problems early. Mr. Chairman, Singapore has developed a multi-pronged approach to ensure our food security, including import diversification, local production, stockpiling of essential food items. We also support local companies to expand overseas and export their produce back home. In 2019, we announced our 30 by 30 goal to buffer Singapore from global disruptions arising from climate change. When COVID-19 hit our shores, the Singapore Food Agency responded quickly by launching the 30 by 30 Express Grant Corps to accelerate local food, food production. I am pleased to share with Ms. Nadia Samdin that in September 2020, SFA awarded close to $40 million to nine companies out of the 40 innovative proposals received to boost local production of eggs, leafy vegetables, and fish. While one farm has since withdrawn and another has yet to accept the offer, the other seven remain on track. One successful recipient, Indoor Farm Factory Innovation, or IFFI, is setting up a high-tech indoor vegetable farm with a vertical integration growth system of up to eight meters in height. I look forward to the vegetable hitting the shelves this year. To produce more with less, we must continue to invest in technology. Under the $144 million Singapore Food Story R&D program, three grant calls on sustainable urban food production and future foods on alternative proteins have been launched. Award results will be announced soon. SFA has supported existing farms to achieve higher productivity through the Agriculture Productivity Fund, or APF, since 2015. As of end December 2020, $43 million have been committed from the APF to support 118 companies and farms. Homegrown company Blue Ocean Aquatecture, Aquaculture Technology benefited from the APF to invest in the recirculating aquaculture system, technology which enables it to farm fish in an indoor control environment and to recycle water within the production loop. The new $60 million Agri-Food Cluster Transformation ACT Fund replaces the APF, which expired in 2020, and provides funding support for local farms over the next five years. On Ms. Nadia Samdin's question, the ACT Fund has been designed with several improvements over the APF. It will better cater to farms of different skills and development needs, from startup to growth and expansion. It will have a higher co-funding quantum and wider scope in support of farms that adopt advanced farming systems which improve productivity and resource efficiency. SFA has also made spaces available for our local farms. Five tranches of agri-land tendered out will progressively be operational in the coming years, and the first batch of multi-storey car park rooftop farms will commence production this year. Seven more HDB MSCP rooftops are currently being tendered for urban farming while the tender for our sixth tranche of land sales will be awarded in the coming weeks. To ensure that we optimize our limited agri-land, SFA will master plan around 390 hectares in Lim Chu Kang to create a vibrant agro-food hub that will anchor global and local best-in-class companies in Singapore. As Don Wee suggested, we should co-create the master plan with stakeholders including the food and non-food farms, nature groups, residents around the area. I have kick-started a series of conversations with these stakeholders to under, better understand their needs and their aspirations for Lim Chu Kang. And we will continue these conversations through the year. With their feedback, we will also form dedicated work groups to develop the master plan. And these will be incorporated with the findings of the environmental baseline and topographical studies when we launch the master planning consultancy in end 2021. We hear Mr. Dong Wee's concerns about the impact of the livelihoods of the farm affected farmers. 26 farms have leases expiring and will be able to stay on until their leases expire, with most having a further short extension. We will continue to facilitate the transition plans, including feasibility of moving to indoor spaces. SFA will work with the industry to minimize any disruption to local production during this transition. Ms. Namdia Samdin asked about the plans to unlock the potential of our local sea-based farms. Most of the approximately 100 coastal farms in the Straits of Johor adopt open-net cage farming techniques. 
SFA has been encouraging them to invest in technology to enhance productivity and resili resilience against external environmental threats. Farms are also encouraged to use fish feed that minimizes impact on the marine ecosystem and tap on the solar and tidal energy to power their farming systems. Farms can apply for the ACT fund for their capital investment and following feedbacks from farms, SFA will launch new sea space tenders on leases within the next few years to provide farms with greater certainty on the use of sea spaces. To ensure that our sea spaces can sustain high yielding production over the long term, SFA will work with the farms to monitor the impact of aquaculture activities on farming sites and measures to manage the spread of fish diseases. SFA has engaged the industry to understand their concerns and we strive to uplift the sector, build for resilience and generate good jobs for Singapore. I echo Ms. Cheryl Chan, Dr. Lim Wee Kiak and Ms. Nadia Sandin's call to build a new generation of agri-food skilled workforce. SFA is working with institutes of higher learning and local farms on courses and structured programs, internship programs to equip students and adult job seekers with skill sets directly relevant to the agri-food sector. Mr. Chairman, in Mandarin, please. The SFA, MSE has announced that as of October 2020, it will be masterminding planning about 390 hectares of land in Lim Chukang to make sure that there will be enough food resilience for Singapore. SFA announced this in October 2020, and the aim is to transform this area into a vibrant agri-food hub. This not only helps to enhance our food resilience, but also create good jobs for Singaporeans in the sector. At the same time, we also work with local sea-based farms on ways to keep our sea spaces highly productive over the long term, including investing in advanced farming systems and monitoring impact of the activities on farming sites. To provide farms with greater certainty on the use of sea spaces and amortize their investments, and SFAs will launch sea spaces tender. ...can make a conscious choice to support local produce, which is fresher and lasts longer. SFA launched the SG Fresh Produce logo in 2020 to facilitate consumers in identifying local produce. A new clean and green standard for urban farms will be introduced this year as a mark of assurance that produce is free from synthetic pesticides and grown in a clean farming environment using resource efficient and sustainable practices. SFA will pilot two projects recommended by the Citizens Work Group where hospitals feature local produce in new mother's first meal after delivery. And wet markets will make it easier for consumers to identify local produce at the stores. While most farms produce for the domestic market, SFA and ESG are also assisting them to secure market access overseas. As mentioned by Ms. Nadia Samdin, the formation of SFA in 2019 brought various food-related functions under a single agency, allowing SFA to have better regulatory oversight of the entire food supply chain from farm to fork. To manage new and emerging food safety risks as the agri-food agri -food landscape develops, SFA will introduce a new bill this year to consolidate and strengthen its powers that currently reside in several pieces of legislation. Last December, SFA allowed the company Eat Just Inc. to sell its cultured chicken as an ingredient in nuggets in Singapore after rigorously assessing that all food safety risks have been addressed. With more novel food products being developed, Mr. Gan Tianpo is spot on in, in suggesting that more food safety assurances should be put in place. The new Act will provide greater legal clarity on the regulatory framework for novel foods, including mandating that a pre-market safety assessment must be done before approval for sale is granted. SFA also inspect and sample novel food products for testing and is done for other products, as is done, being done for other food products. However, food safety is a joint responsibility with the industry and consumers. Food companies must ensure that products are safe and fit for consumption. And to help consumers make informed choices, the new Act 
will continue to impose existing requirements for companies to label the product packaging to indicate the true nature of the food. As pointed out by Ms. Nadia Samdin, another trend accelerated by the pandemic is the proliferation of food delivery. While food delivery companies are not licensed by SFA, as they are not involved in the food preparation for processing and thus have minimum risk of causing food contamination, they remain responsible for ensuring that the food is transported in a manner that does not compromise on food safety. This includes maintaining the cleanliness of the vehicle and equipment used for the transportation of food. The SFA has been engaging food delivery companies on food safety practices and will explore Ms. Nadia's suggestions for these companies to indicate hygiene and cleanliness information on their platform. Mr. Chairman, I urge members to support the work done by MSC, PUB and SFA and to secure Singapore's food and water supplies. Assurances on food and water security serve as social and psychological ballast for Singapore as we build back better. Thank you.